Welcome back, everybody. August the 16th, Monday morning briefing, episode number 44. Uh, real quick, we did do a video over the weekend. I actually shot it, I think, Friday, Thursday or Friday, and it was on non-leather specific supplies. I don't remember. I think non, non-leather craft supplies. I did that video because I'm always constantly buying stuff for the shop at just a normal hardware store or Walmart or something like that. Anytime I go into one of those stores, I'm always looking for just kind of my staples, the things that I keep. And so if you haven't seen that video, go back and check that out. And it just talks about some things you can buy at any kind of little hardware store or Walmart that's good to have around in the shop. And I, th I think it was really helpful. Got a lot of good feedback and that video is doing well. And we're also gonna do one, I mentioned the video, but we'll do one too, maybe this week or next week uh, on the non leather craft tools that I keep in the shop. Cause there's a lot of those. There's a lot of things you can, you can get that aren't necessarily leather craft tools, but are very useful in the shop for you to use um, just to, to get different tasks done, different things, especially if you're doing repair, you need a lot of different little pry bars and little pliers and things like that. Kind of go back and check that video out. We'll have the other one coming up here pretty quick. Now that we're in the fall, we've gotten Waco behind us. We've got our summer behind us. We'll be getting on a little better schedule now coming into the fall of getting some more project videos, some more tip videos, uh, just with little leather crafting tips or suggestions or little, little processes. And, uh, and then like I said, some project videos, we're working on a few of those. We are, we had a lot of people in Waco ask about the tooling uh, course and that is coming along well. We're gonna be, uh, hopefully, I'm hoping to have that launched out before Christmas. And so we're gonna try to finish that up, but I'll keep y'all posted. Be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter if you wanna kind of have the, the, uh, the heads up as soon as that's ready to go. But like I said, that's gonna be a longer course. We're working on some other things uh, as well here in the shop that we're trying to get going for the fall. But I'm excited. The fall is always busy in the saddle shop. It's always busy for everybody, um, whether you're in a saddle shop or, or anything else, because you've got Halloween and Thanksgiving, Christmas. We've got a lot of different things going on. The kids are back in school. There's little things, uh, projects. It's football season. A lot of people get uh, pretty excited about that. And so there's just a lot of things um, going on. Fall is usually really busy, which I can't really imagine it being much more busy than the summer was just with everything everything going on. It is our first summer with the kids uh, not in daycare and actually in school. And so we had them out all summer, which with daycare, it runs you know year round. So this is actually the first year outside of 2020 with COVID and obviously we were moving. So um, they were done with, with uh, daycare whenever we moved, um, but they were done with that thanks to COVID back in March of last year. But it's just kind of different. It's kind of different for us just, just because we do kind of have to find something to do with them and keep them uh, busy and they're in the shop every day with us, and which is cool. They enjoy that. And I'm going to show you all something too that we did for them that'll make their uh, time at the saddle shop a little more fun and kind of give them their own little things to work on and do. Real quick, I just wanted to kind of give you an update too. We did take all the product that we got from, that we took up to Waco, we brought it back. We did uh, do inventory on all that. We put all that back on the website. So if you haven't been to the website in a week or so, uh, just to let you know everything that we did take to Waco, we have updated all the quantities on there. So we do have uh, the belt material packs. I believe we have a bunch of the premium ones and I'm gonna show you some stuff here in a minute. We got another leather shipment in. So we'll be adding to that as well. We'll be cutting that up. So we've got plenty of belt premium packs on there. As far as blemish, as we get those, we'll upload those as well. Like I said, the, the blemish ones just kind of come as I, can, as I find them, as I'm sorting through and kind of grading these belt material packs on their own. We'll, put, we'll decide which ones are blemish and we'll put those in the packs. A bunch of you guys that ordered blemish packs last week, I guess there was something wrong with the uh, inventory that we took because I actually ran out of blemish as I was packaging. Now, fair warning, I did all the packaging last week because Claudia and the kids met her folks down at the beach and went there for the for three or four or five days, whatever it was. So they were gone. So I, I had to do the, the orders and the packaging and all that stuff. So if I miss something or you get something wrong, blame it on me. Give me a call at the shop. We'll get you fixed up. But for those that bought some blemish packs, um, I ran out of those kind of quickly. So towards the tail end, if you bought a blemish pack, you'll have a note in there for me that, hey, we ran out. I just sent you premiums. So um, that's not your fault. It's ours for the inventory. I don't know how it got off. I may have sold a couple couple in the shop or something like that. But anyway, you got a belt blank either way, but it, you may have benefited and ended up getting the upgraded. The, I just upgraded you to the premium pack just so we can get that shipment out to you. Um, but all those shipments left last week, and so we should be back on track. And if you've been waiting a little while, remember we were in Waco, and then I don't normally do the shipping, so it took me a little longer to get the shipping done but we got that done. But website's updated, so if you're looking for anything, we did add the two new printed packs that we added, that we 
had done for Waco, the bifold and the wristlet purse. Now remember, those are both the old pattern. It's the exact same pattern that's, that the digital one is, so don't buy it again if you already have the digital version. No, no reason to buy it twice. But if you haven't gotten those and you want a printed version versus the digital, there you go. We're gonna be designing and working on the new patterns. Some, we've got some new ones going, the canary bag, the big tote. We're gonna to try to finalize that pattern hopefully this week and uh, maybe get that done. We're gonna do a project video building that bag and uh, all the normal thing that I usually do on a project video. And we've got a few little small project videos we're gonna be working on as well. Um, I did share this on my story. Uh, Instagram, I don't know, last week or something like that, but back in April, I think it was April, we ended up applying for and, and got, um, there's just a lot of things you gotta go through to get a dealership, but we got a dealership with Case Knife Company. So the Case Knives, these are actually uh, WR Case and Sons Cutlery. That's, we are now a dealer for them. And so we're gonna be carrying their pocket knives. It, it was kind of an old school kind of dealership set up where you've got to send them pictures of your store and your storefront and all that kind of deal and uh, fill out a bunch of paperwork and stuff. And anyway, that went through fairly easily, uh, placed our first knife order, which was a fairly large order of knives. And we're just now getting some. So they're running behind as a lot of people are right now with everything going on. Um, I don't know exactly what their hang up is or what the deal is. I don't know if it's material uh, acquisition or if it's just, you know, people being out for because of COVID or what's going on. But we're glad to get the knives. We ordered a bunch of different knives, mainly just the knives that I've kind of tended to make sheaths for and that people tend to order and uh, carry. And so we got the large Sodbuster, which is kind of their version um, of the eye brand knife that a lot of cowboys carry for cutting calves and stuff. And then of course the double blade case trapper. These are the two knives that we're gonna carry in the store. We will have these. I got the first, I don't, I think I got 12 of each of the yellow handled, uh, six of the stainless, six of the carbon steel. And that way people can kind of choose which one they prefer. We've only gotten the stainless at the moment, but six of each of these. That's all we've gotten so far. I uh, don't know when we'll get the rest. I kind of sent an email in and asked them when the rest was coming because I've also got a display case coming and they said, we, we don't really know. Like they'll, they'll come as they come in and stuff like that. He didn't have any way of really tracking it. So it is what it is. I'm not gonna complain about it. Everybody's, you know, being patient and doing stuff right now with everything that's going on. So, but just so you know, we do have six of the, Big sod busters and six of the double blade trappers. They will not be on the website for some time probably. Once we get them all in here and I kind of figure out what's going on, get them on the retail floor and all that, then we'll price them and, and put them on the website or whatever we're gonna do with them and, um, and be happy to sell you some. But I just wanted you to know and have a heads up because we've mentioned it on Instagram, but I really hadn't mentioned it on, on our YouTube channel yet, but we are a case dealer and I would say, yes, we can order you knives. So if you find one you would like and you're in the area and you wanna come by the shop and say, hey, can you just order this special knife for me for a gift for somebody? I'd say, yes, we can do that for you. But I will be honest right now, I don't know how long it'll take to get. We've been, like I said, we got the dealership finalized in April and, we, and it's August now. And I guess two weeks ago, I got my first six knives. So that's quite a bit of time. So you might, I don't know, kind of try to hunt around. There's a lot of case dealers around um, and every store is different and they carry all kinds of different knives. So you might just call around or drive around and kind of try different little, you know, feed stores and hardware stores and things like that and see if you can find the knife you're looking for and just purchase it that way versus waiting on it. Because it's probably going to be, you know, quite a bit of wait to try to get something. I'm hoping they get here before Christmas. That's the main reason we wanted them here was for Christmas because we'll make some sheaths with a knife in them and sell them as sets. Uh, during Christmas time, those would always sell well. We're also a more maker pocket knife dealer, and so we'll be getting some of those in as well. I don't know their issue if they're running behind or if they're staying up, you know, with inventory and stuff. I'm not really sure, but I need to call them this week and find out so that we can have some here for Christmas because it's Christmas season or will be come September 1. We're full on Christmas season, so get ready for that. But let's go over here real quick. I want to show you what I made for the kids while they were at the beach last week. So when the kids are in the shop, they're usually playing on, on my benches, obviously, and, and uh, they like to get on the tooling bench and tool and things like that. 
And then my little girl has gotten into making jewelry, just kind of playing around and making little bracelets and stuff. And so her birthday was last week, and so we ended up getting her tons of just different beads and uh, just jewelry making stuff and different different cord and all kinds. I mean, I just kind of went crazy and got her all kinds of stuff I could find on making beads and stuff. And then we went ahead and built her a bench because I just felt like these are going to be strung out all over my bench, and then I'm going to end up spilling these or dropping them all over the shop, which would be a nightmare. So I decided to build her a bench while I was at it. I built my little boy one as well. And put them back to back. They're real simple little benches, nothing fancy, nothing special. And I went ahead and put a tooling rock over there and a little cutting mat and found a bunch of tools that he might get a kick out of. Some that I don't, a lot of them I don't use. All of these I don't use, but like a little basket stamp and some little set stamps and some things. And then some uh, letters and number stamps. And so he's got his own little bench set up here and they can sit here and work and play and and uh, it worked out really good. They were in here Sunday. We did a little yard work here at the shop and, and some different things. And so they sat at these benches all morning long and uh, just had a blast. So they both really, really enjoyed it. So we we're glad that they, they have their own spot now. They can kind of just keep their stuff organized and, and have fun when they come home from school and play on these little benches. And then once they outgrow them, I guess I'll maybe raise them up or hand them down to some other kid that needs a bench or um, I think a bench in a in a kid's life, a little workbench is a, is a handy deal. I know I know both of them really enjoy it. it kind of gives them a little freedom to be creative and, and have fun and try to make things. So that's always a lot of fun. It was actually kind of cool because whenever I was looking for different things to put on his bench, I've got tools kind of hit out all over the place in different benches. But I ended up finding this mallet. And this mallet is actually the very first mallet I got with my very first Tandy kit whenever I was in eighth grade. And I didn't realize that. I knew it was in there, and it's been around in my shop forever. Of course, it's just a little poly mallet, so it's too light. I don't do anything with it anymore, but I used it for years and years. And like I said, this is the exact mallet that was in my kit whenever my dad bought me that uh, first handy leather kit when I was in eighth grade. So I was, that was kind of a one of them little, little touching moments there, I guess, to be able to hand that down to him and let him use that. I thought that was kind of cool. So... Hopefully it doesn't lose it. I'm surprised I haven't lost it. Um, been that long, but I haven't. It's there, so it'll it'll be there, and he can he can use that until he upgrades to something with a little more more weight. But but that's their little benches. We're pretty excited about that, and uh, seems like they are too. So it was a good one. So another thing I did was I went ahead and took Chuck Storms' advice uh, on the podcast on Lost Trade. We interviewed Chuck Storms. He had mentioned. Uh, something we got to talk about lighting and he had an architect that designed his shop and that guy taught him some stuff about lighting but it was to put the your tooling bench perpendicular to a window if you have a window in your shop and so we're going to go ahead and try this because I do, did have it over there by my by my workbench and the light over there is still not very good and the uh, I put that, that uh, box over the tooling bench and had the light underneath it. It still just wasn't enough light. It was just really casting some funny light. So I went ahead and moved my tooling bench over here. It actually opened up the space over there. We've still got to move some stuff around um, to make space for an extra sewing machine when we do decide to do that. But I really like the bench here. Now, Mr. Storm's advice was set it up like this. And then when you're if you're right-handed, if you're carving then you would want to carve from that side of the bench so that the light is coming in from left to right and you won't have any shadows. When you're tooling, you would want to be facing the way I am now, which where the light is coming from the window from right to left, and then you won't have any shadows on your work. That works because on the tooling, I've been tooling here for, I guess I moved this on Friday, and I've been tooling here since then every day a little bit, and the, just this, this amount of light here coming in does make a difference. I don't have any shadows from my hand supporting the, the actual stamp and you're, you're using your mallet here so it's not you're not seeing any shadows there. So it does work there. The problem with this bench is I really can't tool from that side because my stone is not as wide as the bench is. So as well as that works, I may end up building another tooling bench for this stone and then making it only as wide as the stone. I really don't want to do that because I like my storage over here. But I'm thinking about doing that so that I can tool from either side because that does make sense. When you're carving, you would want to carve from this side over here. That way the light comes in 
towards the knife and not across your hand because that's where the shadow is coming. Tulin benches are really hard to get where there's no shadow um, without really good task lighting. And that's one thing that I'm going to add to this deal. I'm going to have to. I thought the overhead LED light over there would work, but it did not. It just added weird shadows. And so I think I'm going to try to find, I tried to find one of the Vimco lights like you mentioned in the podcast. I can't find any. I didn't do any real heavy research on that to try to try to really hunt one down, but I did look. Amazon doesn't have them. Um, and uh, the Vimco website, I didn't see any available for sale there. So, but I know there's a lot of good little, you know, type of uh, desk lamps and desk lights that, that I can probably get something comparable that, that'll light up properly. But I do like the tooling bench here. I put me a carpet down and that way the chair doesn't roll around this wood laminate floor. The chair tends to roll a little too much. And so I put this carpet down. It's also nice if you drop a tool, it lands on the carpet, not that this floor has chipped any tools because it's a laminate, but the carpet will help at least the tool from bouncing all over the place. But all in all, I like it. Plus I get to see outside, which is just an empty lot and then the neighbor over there. So it's not that attractive of a, of a view, but there's some birds chirping around out there and stuff like that. Occasionally one crashes into the window so that it startles me and that's kind of fun. Now, as you can see here, I've got quite a pile of scrap leather. Um, with all the leather we've been cutting and all the stuff we got cut up going to Waco and things like that, I've got a lot of necks and a lot of butts here that we've got to go through, a lot of bellies we've got to go through and just different pieces. We'll turn that into some product and kind of make, make different things out of it. I've got plenty of projects I've got to cut out of this stuff as well, but we will be cutting some more kits out of it. We've got some new dyes we're going to have made and stuff. But this is kind of just to show you, this is basically one shipment of scrap. Um, out of one of my shipments, this is not even all the scrap, but it's the bulk of it kind of sorted out. And so this is kind of a continuous problem that we've got to go through. It's not really a problem. Who wants to run out of veg tan leather? That's kind of the main thing uh, that we use. So it's not really a problem, but it is kind of, it can be cumbersome because as big as a shop is, we do run out of space if we don't if we don't work it through. So I would always advise you working up your scraps. Uh, my good friend Tony that owned Court Saddlery, there and Brian, that was a battle that they were on all the time was working scrap. And that's a lot of times what he would do on Saturdays is go up there and just work up scrap because otherwise it piles up. It's a it's a liability as as a scrap pile because it gets stained, light stained, uh, just old, dirty, and then it's not as useful so we want to try to work it up into a product as quickly as possible and so that's what we'll be doing with a lot of this is just trying to cut it up into stuff that either you or i may be interested in making something out of because as it's sitting here or sitting on a pallet or rolled up in a box you forget you have it you're going to cut into a new side so we're going to go ahead and start working through some of this this week i do have more sheepskin pieces for some wool pads so we'll try to get those cut and on the website this week as well but on top of all of this scrap we also got another leather shipment in the day we left for Waco. And luckily I caught the truck, like I mentioned last week, but it is sitting over here on a pallet. And I'll show you what one of those pallets look like. So this is my leather shipment. This is what one of my pallets looks like when it comes from Herman Oak. And basically what's on this pallet is 13, 15 ounce buffed Herman Oak saddle skirting, nine, 10 ounce leveled saddle skirting for belt bodies and different projects, three, four ounce Herman Oak saddle skirting um, for belt liners and other projects, different liners for things. And then we also get some 5.6. And the 5.6 is mainly what I use. I use that for uh, bifold wallets, but we also use it for a lot of other stuff as well. I do have a splitter, but it's really nice to be able to order that leather, at least the bulk of it, already pulled down to the weights that we need. And that way we're not having to waste time leveling it. Remember, labor is always more expensive than material. So if you can speed that process up by having it come to you already, the weight and finish and size, whatever you need, that will save you a lot of money and save you a lot of time. It's like I said, time's more expensive than the material. So we wanna go ahead and try to do that. But this is what one of my pallets looks like. Um, this is the one the beer distributor was actually picked it up for me and set it right here in the shop. So that was pretty handy. Otherwise, when they come in, cause I come in on FedEx freight, We've usually got to de uh, bust these bands, unwrap this, and bring it in roll by roll, and that's kind of just a pain. Plus, it's kind of you know put here on one pallet. It's already wrapped, so I don't have to worry about it, and uh, it's kind of out of the way. It's not just strung out in here. But that's one of our pallets. If you order quite a bit from Herman Oak, that's kind of how it'll come. 
Um, if you're just getting 10 sides, it'll probably come UPS and just two or three rolls. But when you get up to this amount, it's usually cheaper to go ahead and ship it freight than it is to ship it UPS. So when you get to a certain level as far as how much leather you're getting, um, you're probably going to find, and, and, and Herman Oaks real good about mentioning that to you. They'll say, hey, let's check the, uh, let's check the freight cost compared to the UPS cost, and uh, it'll usually save you some money. The only drawback to that is it's going to come on an 18-wheeler, so you've got to be sure you have uh, the ability for them to get to your shop and to back up to the door. You don't necessarily have to have a forklift or anything like that. Sometimes they'll have a, one of the gates on the back, the, the lift gates, but if they don't, you're just going to have to hand, uh, hand carry it out of there off the pallet and uh, go from there. Plus, you get a free pallet with every delivery, and that's always a plus, especially if you got horses and you need pallets for hay. Never have to buy them again. You just get them every time you get Hermano. Guys, that's really all I got for you this week. We did make a little bit of progress on the saddles. I did get the skirts on the roper. Um, not much to really look at. We got the skirts on there. We'll try to do a video on putting skirts on one of these days. We've had a lot of requests for doing more saddle videos. We will try to work some more of those in as we go along. But we've got to get back at it today. We've got a bunch of shipments to do from this weekend. Like I said, all shipments should be pretty well caught up. Uh, I shipped everything out personally on Friday because they were out of town. If you get something that wasn't correct, then blame me, give me a call at the shop, I'll get you fixed up. But I'm pretty sure I got everything fixed up just right. But like I said, I'm not usually the one normally doing the shipping, but if you have any issues, give us a call here at the shop and me and Claudio will help you out. We'll get you fixed up. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, we'll see you next week in the Monday Morning Briefing.